on Ruto at two and from promises to increase funding, employ more teachers, develop school infrastructure and implement curriculum changes. The education sector has been a full plate for President William Ruto. Two years down the line, what is the state of the education promise? Safina Chengoma takes a look at President Ruto's education scorecard. <laughs> We must get it right. On the campaign trail to become Kenya's fifth president, <laughs> William Ruto promised a raft of ambitious reforms across the education sector. <laughs> From early childhood up to the tertiary levels, Ruto aimed for a complete makeover of the education sector, a plan education experts saw as a tall order. The current government inherited an education sector that was in a downward spiral. The problem is that they made huge promises. They made people think uh, that after 2022, we will enter the land of, of milk and honey. And they either did not have a full understanding of the extent of the problem, or they had that understanding, but they just wanted to win election and they didn't care what happens after that. And, and so because of that, they have largely been unable to stem the downward spiral of the education sector. When he became president, the implementation of the competency-based curriculum was floating midstream, having been introduced by the Uhuru Ruto administration. Earlier, as candidate in the 2022 election, Ruto appeared hesitant on the CBC system with his Kenya Kwanzaa education charter pledging a review of the curriculum should he assume power. The issues that have been identified by teachers, by parents, by students and other stakeholders uh, can be subjected to a robust public conversation. And within weeks of taking office, President Ruto appointed a wide-ranging mandated presidential working party on education reforms. I am very happy that we now have a credible plan. What is going to determine whether that presidential working party was a positive or a negative is what we implement out of the recommendations they made. The recommendations that if we implement will help stem the downward spiral of the education sector the recommendations that if we implement will accelerate the downward spiral. The task force, chaired by Professor Munavu, also recommended a complete overhaul of the existing education funding framework. In its place, a new funding model, known as the student-centered higher education funding model, was introduced, and it categorizes students in five bands, ranging from those who are extremely vulnerable to the less needy. But the proposed model has not been well received. I've been placed in a band that uh, I don't know whether my parents will afford that, because there's no particular job that my parents are doing. That's a child who has qualified to go to the university can be there crying, saying, look, I've been put in bad five. This is bad five. When I ought to be in bad one, and therefore I cannot afford to go to the university. And when you follow, you find the person, the child of a well-to-do family has been put in bad one. We want to see that a vulnerable student is placed in band one where they exist. A student that has capacity to pay has to be placed in band three. And I want to tell students that we are going to fight on. This is just a postponement of a matter that we are giving the government the last chance. The pilot cannot tell you we have taken off from the airport and so we must go even though one of the engines of the plane has collapsed. You come back to the runway. Yeah. So, so, so right now for the funding model, we must go back to the runway. On the human resource front, industrial action by the teachers' unions has become the most recent challenge for the two-year Ruto administration as the welfare question among teachers became prominent. We have deputy principals serving 
in acting capacity. And they don't want to be told. They don't even want to pay them special allowance. Tunaomba tume ya walimu iache madharau. CBA ilikuwa ni maelewano na maelewano lazima yatimizwe. After the teachers, university lecturers have issued a notice of an intention to go on strike, raising the prospects of protracted turbulence in the education sector. As he begins his third year of office, President William Ruto's entry seems full, considering the myriad of challenges still bedeviling the education sector, a sector he had promised to turn into a formidable hub of skill to fulcrum his development and economic agenda. Kenyans also hope that his promise to ensure access to quality education for all is not just a promise. Safin Aching Oma, Citizen TV, Nairobi.